说说大地海外升学。Uh, hi, my name is Heather Kidd, and I'm the director of enrollment management here at Albert College.、Um, I'm also the director of our girls' residence, Victoria Manor. So I actually live in、uh, with 43 teenage girls every day. Hi, my name is Mark Musk. I'm the head of school here at Albert College, and I've just completed my fourth year. I started as head of school in September 2019. Albert College was established in 1857. We're Canada's oldest co-ed boarding and day school, and so we've been educating、uh, international students. And local day students for well over a century and a half. Because of that history and tradition, it really defines who we are today. So the first is our reputation.、Uh, we have a long educating students who are who are prepared and who excel in the next stage of their educational、uh, journeys. The second would be our traditions, our long-standing traditions. These are these are rituals. These are activities that we plan, and they really help foster a sense of community. So when students come to Albert College and participate in these activities, they really really feel feel welcomed and part of the community. One would be, for example. Um, uh, our, our house league competitions. So I see alumni coming back from who graduated in the '60s and the '70s, and they go to the wall to, to reminisce about what year they were here and and how their house league group won that year. So it's a really wonderful tradition we have. The third would be academic、uh, innovation. So even though we're an old school and we've been around a long time, our teachers are very adept innovation in the classroom, and so we can rely on our history to help us to inform、uh, our practice in the classroom. And finally, I'd say networking.、Um, alumni are very actively engaged. In the school, as I said earlier, they come back and visit all the time. It's not unusual to have alumni presenting to students, and so this this networking as part of the Albert community certainly helps students when they graduate and they go to university. We make connections at the university, so students that were a couple years ahead of them are in the same university have these connections, and those connections continue into the workplace after. So typically,、um, being a small school, we can really、uh, share these details with the parents, and they share with us. So they send us the students'、um, airline information.、Uh, We arrange、uh, pickup service direct to Toronto International Airport.、Um, it picks the students up there. They get all the instructions of where exactly to go upon arrival. And when they arrive, they get door-to-door -door service. So Ontario Coachway will pick them up at the、uh, airport and deliver them right here to either our girls or our boys' residence, right to the front door where they're greeted by staff. Wonderful advantages. I, I have I've been in education a long time. I've worked in large schools. I've worked in small schools. And the advantage of an Albert education. Education. It's a small school, and everyone can't help but get to know each other really, really well. If you have an opportunity to come and visit us, and, and you'll sense this as soon as you come on campus, I can't tell you how many times a family comes to tour the school and they leave saying, "Just wonderful feeling of, of fraternity that that's here at Albert College." And in our senior school, which is grades seven to twelve, we have about two hundred students. One、um, hundred of those students would be boarding students who actually live here on campus, and it is a requirement for our students to live here in. Our boarding houses. I would say we have students from about 20 different countries, so we very much are an international school.、Um, and out of those, about 80 to 82 percent would be international. Out of those 100 boarders, when you think of the great Canadian outdoors, that's what Belleville has literally at its doorstep. I mean, we're along the shores of the Bay of Quinte, which is part of Lake Ontario. It really is just a two-minute walk. So our boarding students,、uh, on their time off, have wonderful nature tra nature trails to enjoy, but not just. Locally, we have all of the you know the camping opportunities, the dog sledding opportunities, the skiing opportunities. So the Great Canadian Outdoors really, as I said, is literally at our doorstep. Also, where we're located geographically,、uh, we're right in the middle of the eastern part of the province. We're two hours from Toronto, we're three hours from Ottawa, we're two and a half hours from Montreal. So、uh, students can enjoy the, the you know what these metropolitan centers have to offer, but then retreat to a quieter, smaller city. During our COVID years,、um, because of our location. We had much lower rates of COVID. We're able to keep the students safer because of our, our smaller location. So students, we all eat breakfast together、um, from quarter to eight until eight fifteen. Then we meet for announcements in our chapel area. It's a very beautiful part of the school.、Uh, so we have student-led announcements every morning. Then we have classes after、uh, the announcements. We have a couple of classes. Then we have a mid-morning break where students can come and get some、uh, homemade. 
chocolate chip cookies or get some fruit or some fuel for the day. Then they have another class and then we all eat lunch together here in our dining hall. So it's great because we can all fit together as a family. After lunch, there are a couple of things. Either students meet with their academic advisor where they can get some one-on-one -on -one, um, academic help. As well, teachers will stay in their classrooms for that one hour. And so a student can go to any teacher and get some extra help in a subject. Um, at 3.30, then everybody participates in some form of sports. So whether it's a sports game or a sports practice, then we all eat dinner together from about 5.30 to 6.30. Uh, we do a study hall in the evening where all students are in their rooms and there are residential staff to supervise. And then pretty much everybody's getting ready for bed um, between 10 and 11 o'clock at night. Um, and then we have lights out according to grade level. So everything is available online through our website. So you can apply for boarding, five day boarding or day. So you send in the application. Um, we ask for two years academic report cards. We also ask for a completed teacher evaluation. Um, if you are, uh, English is not your first language, we do ask for language testing results. So either TOEFL, IELTS, Duolingo. Um, and then it goes to our admission committee. And then we're usually able to give families our response or our decision, usually within about two weeks. Uh, so we try to structure different activities on the weekends for students. A couple weekends ago, we had paintball come in and we did that. And our head of school was running around playing paintball with our students. We do karaoke nights. We might do a dance, go to a local wall climbing uh, event. We do uh, pizza parties and making food in the residence and having competitions and seeing which one gets first place. Everything right down to pedicures and manicures and facials in the girls' residence and even just hanging out in the gym um, on the weekends and playing pickup basketball, things like that. Sure, so there are certain times that students can go out and I would say it's pretty much like a home. You can't just leave when you want to. So so there are certain times uh, they have a bit more freedom on the weekends. Uh, sometimes they may want to go out for sushi with a friend and then go to a movie afterwards. Um, again, just like at home, there's a sign out procedure. They have to come and speak to one of the residents uh, staff who's on duty. And as long as we know and we approve, um, we want them to have friends and, and have fun on the weekends. If they wanted to go to Toronto, for example, um, that's two hours away, they would have to get a leave request, which would have to be approved by their parents and approved by the school in order for them to go and it would typically be on an overnight to Toronto if they were going they wouldn't just go for the day that's not something that we would permit um, we're not there with them so if something were to happen we want to make sure that we're there. So it's a little bit later. So again, depending on grade levels. So for example, on a Friday night, pretty much everybody is in by either 10 p.m. if you're one of the junior students or by 11 p.m. if you're a senior. We do um, extend that on Saturday nights to a little bit later, 11.30 midnight. Um, but they have to be in by that certain curfew. Um, and we always do face-to-face -face, uh, greetings with our kids. So if they've been out for a night, there's always somebody in the residence on staff there to greet them when they come back. And I hear this from parents uh, after the students have graduated and gone to university, that by living in boarding, they learn early what it's like to live on their own while at the same time that, that they're studying. And so I can remember one parent telling me that, you know, in, in her her child's first year in university, that student was doing really, really well. And students who went to school with them, who had not been in boarding, were struggling a little bit with the, the, the protocols and how things work in a boarding house. Because when you're in boarding, uh, you do learn independence. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're young children and we work with them, but at the same time, we teach them the skills on how to live on their own and that, that those skills help them develop later in life. But also it's the connections that they make. Uh, we had an alumni reunion recently and uh, I, I remember speaking to a woman from the 80s and she explained to me how um, the you know 30 or 40 other people in the boarding house with her we're like a family. Unfortunately not. So uh, boarding schools are 24 seven. So when it comes to a long weekend break, which is usually about once every six to seven weeks and it uh, is based around major holidays. So Easter, Thanksgiving, those types of things. Uh, there's a couple of options. So the boarding houses do close down during those times. Um, we will help them to find places to stay. So often our day student population 
they uh, want to welcome a border as we call it so they often love to have our international students to their home for that long weekend um, to maybe experience a traditional Canadian Thanksgiving dinner uh, that type of thing so often our day students will open their their homes to our international borders want a change of scenery as well so they may want to go to Toronto or to Ottawa and if they have family or guardians they're certainly welcome to go there um, we actually charter buses to the Scarborough Town Center and downtown Toronto so again that door-to-door -door service uh, coming back they get the buses at the same location and they're delivered right back to our front door um, a lot of students uh, all of our international students require a guardian or a custodian that's part of getting your um, their immigration and visa study permit so they need to have a legal guardian so if a fan if an international student does not have a family member or somebody in Ontario who's over the age of 21 we do have a couple of agencies that we work with that are guardianship custodian agencies and they will also help them with homestays in Toronto and those are typically paid homestays where um, if our students stay with our local day families then they do not pay for that service uh, but if they do choose to go with uh, one of the guardianship services there is a cost for that and they will help them with those homestays so uh, typically for long weekends that can be one of the responsibilities but it's not mandatory so if somebody has a, a father has a friend a work colleague they could agree to be the guardian or the custodian they don't necessarily have to house those students every long weekend um, as I said we will help them find day families so there's different um, aspects I would say of being a guardian and it really depends on that specific person but it does need to be somebody who in an emergency would be responsible for that student should anything happen. We do have students that travel overseas as well. We are, we're, our, our guidance team is adept at working with applications for students around the world. We have students that go to the UK, students that go to Australia, we have students that go to the, the United States, but the majority do tend to apply to uh, Canadian universities. I love the fact that um, I'm sure you've heard about our five A's. I love the fact that students can come from any country and try things that they've maybe never done before and they know they can do that in a safe and warm and family environment. So I've seen over the years, you know, boys, teenage boys who have never sung in their life and they get up in the chapel in front of everybody during announcements and sing a song and the whole you know or the whole audience will start cheering and standing up and clapping uh, you know even if the person wasn't really great um, but that to me is one of the most special things is that people I think the students feel really comfortable here and then when they leave here they leave as very confident um, young adults because they're not afraid to try something new they're not afraid to venture out of their their comfort zone and try one of those five A's เดี๋ยวเขาเอาเส้นหอบมันไทยเส้นข้าวบอกเสร็จตายเตล่า